Okay, so we're recording. Uh, let's get started. So this is um, chapter one, lecture one. And the title of this chapter is two terminal network elements, right? So this is two terminal network elements. So what we're going to be talking about in this chapter, the main conceptual ideas, uh, basically we're going to have, uh, let's see, four lectures. Okay, so lecture one, that is this lecture, we're going to talk about, uh, basically we're going to give you an overview of circuit theory, that is, oops, and it's kind of hard to write on the tablet if you haven't, uh, so... Yeah, like, excuse my handwriting. I'll try to make it as clear as possible. So, overview of circuit theory. There's two main ideas. One is the lump. Actually, uh, let's see. There is the fundamental circuit variables. Then there is the concept of the lumped circuit approximation and then there is the idea of sign conventions okay in uh, lecture 2 we will cover uh, laws of interconnection and in lectures three and four for this chapter, we will cover the actual uh, two terminal circuit elements. Two terminal circuit elements. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is talk about, um, so let us begin with the concept of fundamental circuit variables. By fundamental throughout the book, we essentially mean what the term says. That is, we cannot subdivide, uh, in this case, the, uh, the uh, we cannot subdivide further. So in the case of circuit variables, we are not concerned with, for example, the physical, that is the quantum mechanical concept of charge. Okay, so all we know is we have the symbol Q that represents charge, all right, there are, so with respect to charge, we are only concerned about two things. There are, two kinds of charges, positive and negative, okay, and the practical unit of charge, uh, base, uh, and they are, basically there are two kinds of charges, and the unit of charge that we will use is the Coulomb, which is abbreviated C, okay. So from reading the uh, appropriate section in the book, you should know that one Coulomb is the charge carried by 6.29 and so one Coulomb is the charge carried by approximately 6.24 times 10 to the 18 electrons. Therefore, one electron has a charge of approximately 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Okay? Now, another one another important point about the idea of fundamental, it essentially... Uh, deals, it essentially is related to the concept of modeling. This concept will be emphasized throughout the book. All right, so let me write that out. So fundam uh, oops. fundamental means, so fundamental means, implies, cannot be subdivided further Okay. And it's related to 
the idea of modeling right okay so by modeling that basically we only consider that what modeling means we only consider the essential or the necessary characteristics of an idea or device so we can explain the phenomenon at hand right so in other words what is the or what are the essential characteristics to explain whatever phenomenon we're dealing with right the phenomenon at hand okay so in the case of charge we are only concerned with the so in the case of charge we are only concerned with the fact that there are two kinds of charges and the charge carried by one electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs okay similarly the other circuit variables of interest are current okay but current is simple enough to define in the sense that current is defined as the rate of flow of charge q dot so the dot has special meaning in the sense it's derivative with respect to time okay and then uh, separation of charge requires work and that's called voltage all right so the units of voltage is the volt as it is described as described in the book and then there is also what is called flux linkage which is the number of magnetic field lines per cross-sectional area and voltage is defined as the rate of change of flux linkage okay so we thus have obtained actually part of figure 1.1 from the book okay in other words we can define the four fundamental circuit elements that is resistance this is the general symbol for a nonlinear resistor it will become uh, the signal I mean how to use this this symbol will become clear as this as we move on in this chapter right or in other words a resistor is an element that relates voltage to current right a capacitor is an element that relates um, charge to voltage okay an inductor is an element that relates flux linkage to current therefore and finally a memristor is an element that relates charge to flux linkage all right oops and i messed up in my enthusiasm i basically used the symbol for a memristor here i apologize okay so this is would actually be there the symbol for the nonlinear resistor is that okay as it says in the book correctly okay so we'll uh, consider all these uh, elements in this chapter and throughout the book but the bottom line is the fundamental circuit variables we are concerned with again are voltage charge flux linkage and current by fundamental again we mean we really don't care about how the voltage is generated i mean it could be a lithium ion battery it could be a car battery right it could uh, in the case of alternating current it could be a generator right so but anyway uh, all we care about is we have a pre we separation of charge leads to voltage okay all right so the next concept we need to discuss is the idea of the lumped circuit approximation. Okay. So the lumped circuit approximation basically tells us when it essentially tells us when the techniques 
in the book are applicable or are valid okay for example we cannot apply the techniques in this book to the analysis of power networks across continents all right uh so uh, let's look at a more a less uh, uh, d distributed example in the sense consider a modern multi-core gpu all right so consider a multi core graphics processing unit or gpu of uh, let's say of operating at frequency three gigahertz okay in that case if you look at uh, what is so let's look at the dimensions of the circuit right uh, that is the dimensions of the circuit d can be given uh, so let's look at uh, let's compare sorry the dimensions of the circuit to the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave in question right so wavelength of electromagnetic wave in question in other words the wavelength is given by the speed in mean, uh, electromagnetic waves travel the speed of light and in this case we are given the frequency so it's given by c over nu so which is 3 times 10 to the 8 i'll sometimes write units in the expressions all right but most uh, sometimes i won't and key 3 gigahertz is 10 to the 9 per second so if you simplify this this comes to around 10 this is exactly 10 centimeters okay so in other words, if the dimensions now, if the dimensions are much smaller than the wavelength, okay, that is the dimensions of the circuit in uh, question is much smaller than the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave, this would imply obviously that uh, E and M waves travel travel across the circuit instantaneously instantaneously okay in other words what that means is that is if you have a circuit i mean you'll get used to these symbols later but in other words let's look at a simple what is called as a voltage divider again we'll cover this later in this chapter but basically, we are assuming that whenever we compute, let's say, the voltage at this point in the circuit, we apply this input voltage, we instantaneously get a response here, all right? So this instantaneous, instanta instantaneous response in voltage at A. Okay, that is in essence so the lumped circuit approximation basically tells us when this assumption is actually i mean this assumption that we get an instantaneous response in voltage at a or anywhere in the circuit right or in the current the instantaneous response in current so when is that valid that's what the lumped circuit approximation tells us so if we think about it if we have a distributed uh, power line which spans a continent, then we obviously cannot assume that whenever we change some voltage or current in one part of the power network, if there is an instantaneous change in the other part of the network. In other words, the dimensions of the network are much, much greater than the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave in question. So in that case, if the lumped circuit approximation is... Uh, so if d is much greater than lambda which implies we have distributed circuits okay these are beyond the scope of this book all right that's because we need uh, 
E and M. So E and M field theory. Okay. But again, the lumped circuit approximation tells us when the techniques in this book are applicable. Okay. The final. Uh, part about the final most probably the mo one of the most important concepts in circuit theory is the idea of sign conventions that is how do we know like what convention or what polarity do we assign let's say to the voltage at this point a in the circuit it is a fact that a large percentage of mistakes committed by students beginning students of network theory or even like I mean advanced uh, circuit theorists, it's a fact that it can be traced to either the student's underestimation of the full significance of reference reference directions, current voltage, or the student's failure to maintain a consistent set of references. So the simplest way to understand this is to look at uh, figure 1.2 from the book. All right, so consider. Uh, that basically that you have an, uh, a some device, right? It has a pair of accessible points or terminals and you connect it to an oscilloscope, right? Which plots waveforms as a function of time, voltage waveforms, okay? So the oscilloscope has two terminals labeled plus minus, it plots voltage. So let's say when you plot the voltage, you get something like this. But suppose, so this is A, okay? Suppose you flip. Now it's it's actually obvious for a, by a common sense that if you flip the terminals of the scope, all right, so let me see if I can use a different color. Uh, let's see, draw. Uh, all right, I don't know how to switch the color yet probably next lecture all right anyway so i'm going to do a minus there make it a little bit bold plus v okay so if you do this what the scope is going to show is a waveform like this right assuming that the waveform that we get over here looks like this the waveform we're going to get here will look like that okay so What, uh, so the, basically, it shows that it, this experiment shows that it does not matter where we connect the positive terminal in the sense that if B is at the positive terminal, it does not mean that B is at a higher potential than terminal A. It does mean, however, that if at any time T1, okay, so let's consider this time T1, okay, if V of T1 is greater than 0, which it is, okay, V of T1, okay, so I'll draw, I'll make a, uh, next lecture, I'll be sure to uh, draw, I mean, like, make it clearer it's obvious like this is the first time i'm doing this v of t1 there so if v of t1 is greater than zero it implies that at t1 the potential at b is greater than at potential at a okay so if you look at here if you look at t1 over here the same time approximately right so v of t1 in this case is less than zero it implies at that time the potential at a is less than potential at b right because here a is connected to the positive terminal but you see these are equivalent right and that is pretty much it okay that is basically the final answers are identical 
So we can therefore conclude that in order to specify the voltage between any pair of terminals unambiguously, uh, we may arbitrarily assume one of the two terminals to be positive, right? So all it says is if the voltage is positive, I mean, if the measured voltage difference between the two terminals is positive, it means one terminal is at higher potential than the other. That's all it means. So by analogy, we can conclude that in order to specify the current through any wire unambiguously, we may arbitrarily assume any of the possible two directions to be positive. Okay. Now, this actually uh, leads more into the concept of power. And I promise that the lecture will, lectures will be 20 minutes long. This is already running a little bit overhead, I mean, o over time. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. So in lecture two, what we will do is we'll wrap up our sign conventions. Okay. And start with the ideas of the laws of interconnection. I will see you in lecture two.